Oh, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. Um, I've mostly been procrastinating, but also I've been doing my blog in written form, so it just seemed redundant to also do a video, so I just haven't been doing it. But I've come back uh, to do a video blog, and I'm probably going to start doing it somewhat regularly for a number of reasons. Well, first, I have several projects I've been wanting to do for a very long time. I've just been procrastinating basically for several years. Um, but I was inspired again recently because I watched the Streamy Awards a couple of weeks ago. And I really want to do some of these projects, some very creative video projects. And part of that requires just being comfortable in front of the camera. Part of that involves uh, doing a lot of video editing. So I'll get practice in both just by doing this uh, video blog. But the other reason that I am doing this uh, is because I just started this project of being involved in this uh, something called th 30 by 30. It's supposed to be spending 30 minutes a day for 30 days uh, doing some kind of artistic creative thing. I definitely won't be able to do this every single day, but I will spend probably a lot more than the 900 minutes um, on this project. So what I've decided to do for this uh, 30 by 30 challenge is I'm going to be doing an animation. And the best way to show my progress on that is really to show you short video segments of the animation once I actually have something animated. Uh, right now I'm just working on the models and nothing moves. Uh, so I can just show a picture but later on I'm going to need to be able to show video and it just makes more sense to do the whole thing as a video explaining what it is I'm doing instead of writing out the explanation and then showing just a few seconds of animation. I'll just do the whole thing as a video. It makes more sense. It's more fluid and gives me more practice. So specifically for this project, I am going to be doing an animation of a cat that is going to calculate the mathematical equation 30 times 30. This takes place in a classroom and so I have to build every, absolutely everything completely from scratch. Um, although the chair in the classroom I actually built for a previous project, but that was originally built from scratch as well. And every single thing has to be built from basic geometric primitives of you know, squares and, and circles and rectangles and cubes and, and spheres and, and cylinders. Those are basically the only shapes that they give you because I'm using uh, Blender, which is both very powerful and somewhat primitive. They don't give you any kind of uh, characters to work with. Although there are plenty of characters available I could download from somewhere, but it just doesn't feel right to use somebody else's character even if it's totally legal. You know, someone may have open source characters or whatever. It just doesn't seem like it's a full expression of my artistic ability if I use somebody else's stuff. So I'm building everything on my own. And so I spent four hours today just building the classroom and that doesn't count the, the chair. And previously I built the cat already. Um, and how that came about is I was actually trying to build um, a 3D model of an apple which I wanted to use as a logo for a website that I'm creating. And I was getting bored with the apple and I, I realized that if I stretch out the base of an apple a little bit, it actually turns into like the legs of a piggy bank. And so I was starting to convert that apple into a piggy bank and then I decided might be more interesting to make it like a cat instead of a pig. And so that's what I did. And when I finished that, I realized this is very similar to the Smorkin Labbit. And for those of you who don't know, the Smorkin Labbit is this uh, is this thing which was made um, probably in response to these signs that appear in Asian countries. Uh, they have these no smoking signs in which they misspell smoking as smorkin, S-M-O-R-K-I-N. And so some artists decided to make a rabbit sculpture with a cigarette and call it the smorkin labbit. And the cat that I made looks very similar to that. So 
My idea is to make a smoking cat that instead of having a cigarette in his mouth, it's going to have a piece of chalk walking around in a, a school. And he comes into a classroom and sees on the chalkboard that there's this equation 30 times 30. And because he's a cat, he doesn't easily calculate this. In fact, uh, he tries three times. So first time he starts like trying to count on his uh, toes um, and realizes he can't even figure out what 30 really means uh, to him because he can't count up to 30. So then he jumps on the table and there's an abacus. He starts trying to use the abacus, but he's a cat. So, you know, knocking balls back and forth is really a lot of fun for a cat. And eventually he knocks it off the table and it shatters on the floor and somehow breaks apart. And finally he turns its attention then to a calculator that is on the teacher's desk and he punches out the equation and finally gets the answer. So that's the plan and it's actually probably going to take more than a month to do this. Not only because I'm doing everything from geometric primitives, but then I also have to uh, set up the actual movements of the cat and try to make it as natural as possible. And part of that also involves creating what are referred to as bones uh, so that I can move you know, like one paw at a time and have things coordinate all, all together. Then I have to develop a whole walk cycle in which uh, when the cat walks down the hall, uh, it moves his tail, moves one leg, moves the other. Everything has to synchronize in just the right way to be organic. And that's going to involve a lot of work. But then even after I have all that done, I also have to do the sounds. The, the entire uh, set of audio effects have to be created. And I'm going to do that all on my own. Um, I'm not going to borrow like some sound recordings that somebody else did. Since I have professional recording equipment, I figure why not do that as well and also get some practice making the sound effects so that in future animations I'll, I'll have uh, more experience and I'll have a library of sounds of my own that I can use for that purpose. So I make a lot of sound effects and I also have to make all the vocalizations for the cat and that's probably going to be the most difficult part because I don't want this cat to sound like a real cat. I want it somewhere between cat and human because the personality of the cat is going to be somewhere between uh, that of cat and human. And the best way to do that is I'm going to actually have to use my own voice to, to make somewhat cat-like sounds. And they have to be emotionally expressive. You know, the cat, when the cat gets intrigued or surprised, it has to show, and it has to show in a human-like way, not in a cat-like way. So that's my project, and I'm going to be posting updates on that and possibly updates on other things going on in my life. There's not much else really going on right now, um, except I did finally get my hospital ID, which is a major victory for me because it, that actually took me over two months to get um, so I can finally teach you at the hospital again. Um, so that's it. Um, I'll post updates um, as they happen.